Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Wells again here at Rob Wells Music Talk, episode two. Uh, thank you for staying with me for another round. And uh, today we're going to be talking about, in this video, basically what a typical day is like for me or for a songwriter or a producer or a, a songwriter producer. Just taking you through all the different things that encompass a full day and all the different things that can happen. Uh, each day is kind of different just depending on what's happening, whether I'm writing or whether I'm producing or a bit of both or just doing business or all of that. We're just going to talk about all the different facets of what can happen within a day. So uh, the first thing that we're going to talk about is what I like to call business in the morning. And business in the morning is really, really important. You can't just be non-stop creative, creative, creative. If you don't take care of the business, it's insane how it just piles up and it becomes just out of control. So here's quite a lot of the things that I do during the morning. And, and the morning I'm basically gonna say is from nine in the morning until 11 o'clock, right around there. So first thing that I like to do definitely um, after you know breakfast or getting the kids out for school, all of that, uh, is exercise. And I know I probably don't look like it, but uh, exercise is something that I really enjoy doing. Um, it's just, it's great to get out. And even if you just go for a walk or riding a bike or anything that you could possibly imagine, uh, just whatever it takes to get out and get your body moving is really important. It's great for the mind. It just uh, helps you creatively think of all sorts of ideas before your session. Uh, it's great to just get out and connect with nature or just be on a treadmill or whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever it takes. Um, so after exercise, the business part of it is so important. As I said before, I'll say it again, answering emails, um, dealing with social media, uh, just getting out there and just responding to people, uh, anybody that's written to you. It's really good to be on top of that and try to respond as much as possible. I know that I've been uh, very much to blame many times of uh, letting emails slide and it's just horrible, it's just the mountain that piles up if you don't keep on that. Uh, after that, uh, it's dealing with all the different facets of the music industry, people that I have to uh, respond to and deal with outside of emails and social media, um, is picking up the phone and dealing with lawyers, artists, managers, uh, labels, a and assistants. Um, all of those different things. Uh, I have my own lawyer. Artists have their own lawyers. Uh, they have their own managers. I have my own manager. Um, just all the communication, just sort of like figuring out what you're going to be working on and how it's going to be all figured out, uh, you know, legally and with contracts and all of that so that there's, uh, there's no hurt feelings at the end of the day. Uh, after that, uh, I manage my schedule like crazy. I live and breathe by my calendar. Having a calendar and working within that calendar is so important. It's to be on top of it and setting yourself up with reminders and alerts and things that happen uh, just for all the different things that happen within your schedule. It's very, very important. Um, after that, I'm booking gigs. I'm hustling for more gigs, uh, making changes to previous gigs even. Um, that happens quite a lot where I will be, you know, currently working on one project and an older project comes back and says, can you do a quick remix or can you make a quick edit on something? So there, that happens quite a lot. And again, you have to be on top of that or the mountain starts piling up. Um, doing your research on new music and new styles. So important. Um, Music changes all the time from year to year. And if you're not on top of the latest and greatest styles that are out there, uh, if you want to stay current, if you want to stay employed, um, and, and not just in one particular style uh, of music, like just getting in and figuring out what the latest pop trends are or what the latest country trends are or hip hop or, or whatever it is, whatever you can possibly imagine, just staying on top of the new stuff that's coming out and really listening to to a lot of it. Quite a lot of the listening can actually happen during your exercise time when you go out for a walk, when you go out, uh, hop on the bike, um, you can just pop some headphones in and just 
go on to Apple Music or whatever it is that you're dealing with, whatever streaming service, and just listen to what's new. Listen to different things. And if you, you're not cool with what you're listening to, then switch on to something else. But just keep feeding yourself new and exciting things. And um, I quite often go to a website called The Hype Machine. The Hype, H-Y-P-E. Um, it's really, really cool stuff on there. It's sort of off the beaten path music that um, you're not really gonna hear anywhere else. And uh, it's, it's quite often music that you'll hear sort of coming down the road. Two years later, you'll start to hear the music that's playing on Hype Machine. And uh, it's, it's quite interesting music to listen to. Um, learning new software is something as a producer that I definitely have to do all the time. Um, I'm excited about the new technology that's coming out. I love all the different uh, things that are that are happening within software, within apps on your phone or your iPad or device or uh, the stuff that's on the computer. Uh, I just I love all the new changes and all the new things that are coming out. Um, I don't really have a lot of new software. I sort of have stuff that I really, really love and I'll audition things. And if it's something that I think that it's really important, then I'll go and I'll, I'll make that a part of my system. Um, but by and large, a lot of the new software that I check out, I either don't find a good use for it or just the occasional time I will find a use for it and I'll, I'll keep it, I'll install it on, on my system. Um, staying current, yeah, that's again, the whole thing with lis listening to new music, just, just staying current, uh, updating, your website, updating your social media, just sort of letting people know what you're doing. Um, dealing with accounting, that's a huge, huge thing. Dealing with accounting, uh, you know, just making sure that you are sending out invoices, that you're getting paid, that you are submitting the proper taxes at the end of the year. Man, your banking, all that stuff, just really, really important. Um, now, I also do interviews for both radio and print and podcasts, uh, various different things. Um, that sort of happens between this 9 and 11 a.m. time frame. Um, chasing down money that you're owed that is a big part of the music industry. Everybody wants you to work for them, but then when it's time to pay, that can sometimes be a big problem. So having a manager is great because, man, do they ever chase down that money and leaving you to sort of be a little bit more on the creative side of things. However, if you don't have a manager, it's important to just, you know, really sort of be on top of the money that you're owed and don't let that slide and be on top of it and, and get that money, definitely. Uh, communicating with your publisher on at least a weekly basis. I have um, a music publisher. I'm signed to Sony ATV Music Publishing, and it's really good to just connect with them and say, hey, here's what I'm working on. Uh, what do you have coming down the pipeline? And sometimes your publisher might be thinking, well, there's an artist coming in from this town and they'd love to work with you, and can you find a hole in your schedule to make that happen? So that's also really good, just being in communication again with all the different facets of the music industry, your publisher included. Um, then organizing travel for work outside of the country, etc., etc., etc. That's again part of having a great calendar system and planning properly sort of a six week window ahead of time, figuring out where you're going to be, what you can work on, uh, how long it's going to take you to work on each project, all of that. Um, so as you can see, just that small little portion that I call business in the morning. Uh, being a songwriter is not just about songwriting. Uh, it's very much the, the business aspect of songwriting is very, very important to stay on top of. And I haven't really even scratched the surface of all the different business things that you can do within that time frame. Um, sometimes if it really piles up, you need to make business for the whole day and just really catch up, just really focus and make that happen. Even if you have a lot of projects that are happening and you're behind the eight ball of, of getting those projects done, it's really, really great to get that business just taken care of. And then you can just focus on the creative stuff. Then your mind is totally free and clear and you're not worried about whatever, you know, just be focused on the creative because the next phase that I go into in the afternoon, I call this party in the afternoon and um, I call it party because I just, I have so much fun doing what I do and I love doing what I do. It's, it's, uh, I'm excited to get behind all of this and start working and working with people and uh, communicating with people and trying to create some really, really fun creative material. So that's why I call it party in the afternoon. Here are the different things that happen within party in the afternoon. 
uh, traveling to your writing gig or preparing your own home if you're writing from there. You definitely have to factor in that time. Uh, you have to figure out how long it's going to take you to get to wherever it is, uh, what time you're going to start, what time you're going to end. If you're working from home, you have to be ready and on time for when the people come to work with you. Uh, you also have to set up your own home so that it's uh, nice and inviting and, and comfortable and everybody loves working out of there. Uh, maybe you want to get some snacks, sort of just prepared, some, some drinks, uh, just... Uh, you, you know, just uh, basic stuff just for people to, to sit there and be happy and uh, just make sure your house is inviting and clean and uh, just a nice place to work, a nice comfortable place to work. Um, now, once you've done that, I love to prepare ideas and inspirations that could work for the session. I love to come in with an idea for the songwriting session. Just um, come in and say, you know, what do you guys think about this? Here's something that I that I thought of, whether it's a really cool title or a really cool concept or a melody line or a chordal structure or anything like that. It's great to come in with something, some little idea. Um, even if uh, you have more than one idea, that that's, that's even better. Um, just don't come in empty handed and look around and say, I don't know, what do you guys want to do? It's really, really great if you have just a limited amount of time to work with people, let's say from 11 to 6, it's great if you can come in with a couple of ideas and then you can really hit the ground running um, really, really quickly. Um, another thing that I do during party in the afternoon is I partner up with proper uh, co-writers for the gig required. Um, now I myself am more of a track writer more of a music person, a producer, writer, I always partner up with a lyricist, with a, with a top liner. And top liner, that means basically anybody who uh, is really specialized at lyrics and melody. Um, that's really, really important just because they possess the skill set that I don't really possess. And uh, it's great to just bounce ideas off of somebody like that. And whatever ideas they have will usually fuel my creative fire to pour it into the music, into the production, into the tracks, into the arrangement, uh, into the melody, all of that. And hopefully what I'm doing will feed their fuel their fire. Um, so that's another thing that I do. I, I Before even starting a session, I'll know who it is that I'm going to be co-writing with during that session, just based on the artist that I'm going to be working with. Um, during party in the afternoon, I also uh, coming up with a song from scratch or song doctoring a song that's already been started. Um, there's two different things where we can start at the beginning uh, 11 o'clock and start working away on something that, you know, coming in with an idea and just, just seeing that worked on and, uh, and sounded great by the end of the day. Or sometimes uh, an artist comes in and says, you know what, I've got this song that's pretty much like 80% there, but I need help with the chorus or I need help with the bridge or, you know, just a little bit of arrangement. And that's called song doctoring. And that's something else that, that we do as songwriters. Um, we can either start, start a song from scratch or song doctoring. Um, uh, what else do we work on? Uh, we come up with melodies, chord arrangements, programming, lyrics, uh, recording demos or finished products for artist projects, uh, mixing, mastering. That's all sort of all the different hats that we can wear during party in the afternoon. Just basically being creative and doing all the things that it takes for making a song from beginning to end. All those different things happen at various different times during party in the afternoon. Uh, let's see, taking meetings with labels, that can sometimes happen where if I don't have an artist coming in, then I'll look for something else to do. Uh, taking meetings with labels is great because you can go in and you can ask them, what is it that you're working on? Who are you currently developing? What are you excited about? Um, is there anybody that you think that I'd be a good match for? Uh, that's, that's a really good thing to do. Um, sometimes I appear on different things like TV shows. Uh, I go and I teach. Um, I do public speaking events, uh, helping others, etc. All of those things sort of encompass party in the afternoon. And then of course the drive home, if you're working outside the home, uh, that's all good to, to factor that out. And it should all be scheduled. It should all be, be really, really, really scheduled out. Um, I'm a huge believer in banker's hours, being creative. I'm such a huge believer in working from 11 to six. And I really try to make it so that it is just 11 to six all the time. Um, sometimes it goes beyond just if you're really, you know, you have a massive project and you've got a deadline that you've got to get done, uh, got to get through the door. 
then you work more than 11 to 6. But by and large, I try to work 11 to 6 because I then go into my next portion, which I call sleep at night. But before I go to sleep, there's things that I do. And I think it's really important that at six o'clock you just do a hard cutoff and retreat back to your corner, back to your cave, back to your home um, and refresh, recharge the batteries. So here's some things that I do during sleep at night. Um, I connect with my loved ones, absolutely. I give hugs to everybody and just so great to see you again and just don't even think about music at all. Um, I don't really listen to any more music uh, at that point. I sort of switch gears and I'll watch a TV show or I'll watch a movie at night. Um, the only time that I'll uh, listen to music is, you know, if there's an artist in town that, that I've worked with before and they're they're playing somewhere, then I'll I'll go see a show or that sort of thing. But that that's pretty much it. Um, I also work on music throughout the entire day, so it's it's nice to give your ears a little bit of a break. Really, really important to give your ears a break so that you can come in the next day totally refreshed and ready to listen to music again. Um, so yeah, I watch TV shows, I watch movies for inspiration, uh, I go for walks again, uh, maybe go to a mall this time instead of being in nature, just you know, head to a bookstore or go to a library, um, just something that's different. Or you can go back into nature, uh, you can look at the stars at night, just whatever it takes to just sort of get you away and refresh and recharge, eat a great meal, um, drink some wine uh, if you're of age, uh, whatever it takes uh just just have a lot of fun and then uh you know i basically go to sleep at a reasonable hour and i try to get a good amount of sleep in when i was young when i was in my 20s i could work crazy amounts of hours um you know i i, I could do like a 24-hour shift basically and then go to sleep for a couple hours and wake up the next day and do a 20-hour shift and then sleep for a couple hours and that was for a limited, a very, very limited amount of time in my life. And as I got older, year after year, then I couldn't do it anymore. It's really important, I think, just throughout your whole life to get a good amount of sleep and wake up recharged and refreshed and start the whole cycle again. Go back into business in the morning and party in the afternoon and then sleep at night and then do it again. And I think that if you do that, then it's a, you're creating basically a really good, well-oiled machine. Uh, that can just function and can think properly and can be really smart about things and, and, and give your best ideas and put your best foot forward and, and be uh, very successful at this business. So that's kind of what a typical day is like for me and uh, maybe it's like that for other songwriters. Uh, at least the people that I work with, it's usually like that. But uh, hopefully that gives you a bit of an insight as to that particular subject matter. Um, thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this channel if you like this uh, sort of thing and send me some questions. I'd love to answer some of your questions and uh, um, maybe that will uh, open up another idea for another show um, or maybe I can just address them at the end of one show. Um, but uh, anyways, having a lot of fun doing this and hopefully you're having fun listening. So thank you and I'll see you soon.